Okay, fifth graders, we are starting 6-5, halfway through chapter 6. And so now we're going to be dividing by uh, decimals. How can you divide by a decimal? That's kind of the, the title of the section here. So um, let's look at the example they, they gave us here. We'll talk about that here just for a moment. So it says... Um, uh, Michelle purchased several bottles of water before tax is added. The total cost is 360 and the cost of each bottle is 120 It says, how many bottles did she buy? So you're dividing 360 by 120 So also, I could just set it up this way for a second here. $3.60 being divided by $1.20. So I'm just going to let that sit here for a moment. Let's come over here and look at... Um, what they're showing us here it says one way think of 360 is the same as 36 dimes because 36 dimes is three dollars and sixty cents and then it says a dollar twenty is the same as 12 dimes all right so um three is thirty three dollars is thirty dimes and sixty cents is six dimes so how many twelves how many twelves are in 36 well the answer is three so she uh, bought three bottles. The other way to think about it is uh, think of it in terms of multiplication. Find 360 divided by 12. Use the relationship between multiplication and division. So here they set it up for us. $1.20 times what equals 360? And, and you can see I set it up over here. $1.20. Oh, no. Okay, no. I'm not going to say that. That'll get confusing. Um, so let's see here. Um, writing this another way is 120 hundredths times blank e equals 360 hundredths. And so again, she she bought three bottles. All right. Um, and you should see some compatible numbers here. Let me let me have you look at this a third way. Uh, uh, 120 into 360. Well, 120. Um, plus 120 plus 120 okay it is 360 so you know 12 goes into 36 three times so that's that's another way you can look at it um, but if we were just to use a sort of a standard algorithm let's look at that here for a moment all right so when you're ever dividing by a number with a decimal you get rid of the decimal and you do that by moving it to the right so how many places do we have to move this decimal to get it all the way over to the right so um, first off I'm gonna go one two places so I had to move it two places I'll put a little 2p right there so whatever I do on the outside, I have to do on the inside. So that means I have to take this decimal right here and move it two places, one, two. Okay. So now what do we have here? Now we have 120 being divided into 360. We've got rid of the decimals. All right. They're on both numbers. They're all the way to the. They're all the way to the right. So when, they're, when we're talking about whole numbers, we don't even put down the decimal. We just know what's there. So we've already addressed this. How many times does 120 fit into 360? Well, first off, does 120 go into 3? No, it does not. Does 120 fit into 36? No, it does not. Does 120 fit into 360? Yes, it does. Three times, and I could put 360. And then I have nothing left over. There's no remainder. So again, um, the answer, just like in, in these and here and in here, um, the answer is three. Okay. So um, just there's there's several different ways you can look at these, and uh, a lot of these initial problems have compatible numbers that should make it a little bit easier for you. Let's drop down to the convince me. It says construct arguments is 3.6 uh, divided by 1.2 equal to less than or greater than 36 divided by 12. Well, what's 36 divided by 12? That's three. What's 3.6 divided by 1.2? So three, there's 
couple different ways to look at this. Um, three, whoops, I'm going to use something a little bit lighter here. So 3.6 divided by 1.2. Well, first off, let me ask you, what place is the three? That's the ones. What place is this one? It's in the ones. How many, how many ones fit into three? Well, there's three. Okay, that fits in perfectly. So uh, what place is this? The six here, this is the, uh, the tenths place. It's the number, the first number to the right of the decimal. What number is this? The two is in the tenths place. And two goes into six three times. So it just so happens 1.2 fits perfectly three times into 3.6. Here's another way to look at it. The way I showed you uh, a couple minutes ago. Um, 3.6 divided by 1.2. What's the first thing you got to do? I said get rid of the decimal. How many, how, how many places do you have to move the decimal over? One place. So if you moved what's on the outside one place, you move what's on the inside one place. So now we don't have any decimals. Now we just have 36 divided by 12. But what's 36 divided by 12? The answer is 3. Okay. So I can, you can put the convince me down in your own words, however you want to do that. Let's drop down to a couple problems, and then I'm probably going to cut you guys loose here, let you try some of these. This is, this is a relatively easy lesson here. How is dividing by a decimal like dividing by a whole number? Um, um, the mechanics are the same. I say mechanics, I could say steps, the steps are the same, okay, um, just get rid of the decimal, alright. Number two, how can you use multiplication to find 2.8 divided by 0.7? Another way to look at this, here's multiplication. Um, so 0.7 times um, something, I'll put that in a question mark, okay, equals 2.8. So you could definitely write that down. Another way of, of doing this, we could throw in a little bit, a little bit of algebra here, 0.7 times, oh, we'll just call it A, equals 2.8. So um, sometimes we'll will use letters, you'll get a lot more of that come junior high in place of numbers to figure that out. Well, um, compatible numbers. Let's just look at, forget the decimals for a moment. How many times does 7 go into 28? 7 goes to 28 four times. All right. 3 through 6, uh, what do you know about decimal division and mental math to find each quotient? Oh, so I'm sorry, use what you know. All right, so, I, you know, three is pretty easy. Think about it. 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is equal to one half. How many one halves equal one? Well, two. And then, so if one half fits into one twice, it would go into two four times. So the answer to that one is four. Um, how about number six here? Do number six. Uh, we've got 6.6 .6 being divided by 0.3. Okay, if we did it that way, what do we have to do? Move the decimal over. Get rid of it. All right, moved it one place. That means I'm going to move this one one place. So now what do we have? Now we have 3 into 66. Well, uh, here's another algebra problem. We could do what times 3, I'll call it A, equals 66. It's another way to look at it. 
Um, or you could just do the division. Three goes into six twice. Nothing left over. Whoops. Bring down the next six. Three goes into that six twice. So it's 22. Does that make sense? 22 times three, what's that equal? 66. There's so many different ways to solve these and look at them and you guys in your own heads will have have a variety of ways to, to tackle these. And whatever works best for you, as long as the answer is correct, we got nothing, nothing to worry about here. Uh, so the answer to that one is 22. All right, I'm gonna do just maybe one or two of these and call it a call it a video here. Although I have to get to the next page. Um, let's look at number 12. So number 12 is. 0 0.04 being divided into 4.56. What's the first thing we do? Move the decimal over two places. Well, if I moved it two places out here, then I've got to move it two places in here. One, two. So essentially, um, what do we have? We have um, four, we don't even need to worry about the zero, into 456. How many times does 4 go into 4? Once. What's left over? Nothing. Bring down the 5. How many times does 4 go into 5? Goes in once. What's left over? 1. Bring down the 6. How many times does 4 go into 16? Four times. Anything left over? Nope. So what's the answer? What's the answer? It is um, 114. So if you go, go back over to this problem, 0 0.04 goes into 400 and, I'm sorry, 4.56, 114 times. Okay. All right, let's look at the last page. Um, make up a money story for the equation. Yeah, that's lame. Sorry, don't have to worry about that. <laughs> uh, it's so much easier to grade when there's one correct answer. You know, I, I don't want to have to listen to 48 different answers <laughs> for number 19. All right, here we go. Carol bought uh, five pork chops and three steaks. I would have had a steak. I don't care for. I mean, I'll eat pork chop, pork, pork chops, but they're not my favorite. Each pork chop weighs a 0.32 pound, um, and each steak weighs 0.8 pound or of a pound. How many pounds of meat did she buy in all? Well, that's an addition problem. I'll let you guys figure that one out. A little bit of multiplication, but also and then you're going to be adding them together. Number 21, Tim estimates that 60 divided by 5.7 is about 10. Will the actual quotient, that's the answer to the division problem, be greater or less than 10? Explain. Um, greater. Because... Um, Because 5.7 um, is less than 6. Okay. Let's see here. Because you'd be multiplying these two. Um, Well, I think I'm not going to say that. That might just make it more confusing. Okay, number 22, Dax, estimates that 4,989 divided by 0.89 is about 500. Is his estimate reasonable? Why or why not? 500? How would he get 500? Um...
Yeah, that's too low. It should be about 5,000. So, um, so the no is the answer. Um, so five, 5,000, so this is close to one. And what's this one close to? This is close to 5,000. So what's 5,000 divided by one? Well, that's about 5,000. So 500, no, 500 is much too low. I had to think about that one for a moment. 23, man, I shouldn't do all these for you. Sometimes I get carried away and end up doing more than, than I planned. Um, Susan solves 1.4 divided by 0.2. Use the diagram. Using the diagram to, at the right, is her reasoning correct? Um, yeah, it looks like she uh, took, so the answer is yes. Um, so 1.4 uh, into uh, seven groups of, whoops, seven groups of two tenths. So what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Um, the same dividend is divided by point 0.1 and point 0.01. How do the quotients compare? Well, one will be 10 times larger. than the other. Yeah, any number, anytime you multiply a number by 0.1 and then you multiply it by 0.01, the difference between these two is 10 times. This one is 10 times greater than this one. And so that, and that would apply to any number. It doesn't matter what the number is. And if it was 0 0.001, it would be a hundred times greater than 0.1. Okay. Uh, give three examples of a power of 10. And explain why one of your examples is a power of 10. So, um, three examples of a power of 10. I'll do this one. So. Um, an example of a power of 10, so 10 to the seventh, that's by the power of 10, because that's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, you know, seven times. Um, 100, that's a power of 10, because it's 10 times 10. And then, um, I don't know, 10 to the third, that's a power of 10. Um, and, and if I have to explain that, that would be equal to 10 times 10 times 10. Okay. All right, 26, 27, you guys can do on your own. And that's it. Here we go. Uh, more division. And this time we're dividing by decimals also. So uh, I will see you guys later.